In a world of tempered glass, LEDs, and gimmicks, it's pretty rare that we come across a fully Spartan product that focuses entirely on performance. EVGA has filled that market segment with its dark series for motherboards named at least partially for their lack of LEDs, and its coolers have traditionally been more price performance focused than they were looks oriented. The CLC series does have a couple of RGB LEDs, but only enough to tick the marketing boxes. For the rest, the coolers are aimed at hitting price to performance mixes for the best value. Today, we're reviewing EVGA's brand new CLC 360, a $150 liquid cooler, to see if it hits the mark. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's Hydro X water cooling series. Corsair Strength is bringing water cooling to the masses, and it has built out cooling solutions with industry leaders to help newcomers get into open loop cooling. Corsair has fittings, adapters, GPU water blocks, CPU water blocks, pump res combos, and radiators all available in the HydroX line. As you can see in our footage, these kits can be used to build beautiful open loop systems. Learn more at the link in the description below. Some pretty basic stuff here. The CLC 360, first of all, as we made fun of plenty with the CLC 280 review, is it's it's the same as naming your new video card video card instead of EVGA RTX 2080 Ti FTW3 ICX2 or whatever you just you named it VGA. So CLC means closed loop liquid cooler. Some people call them AIOs. We call them CLCs. The CLC 360 is EVGA's 360 millimeter closed loop liquid cooler. It's got three 120 millimeter fans on it. They come with it, of course, and it's really it's a sized up version of the CLC 280 or the more accurately CLC 240 that we reviewed previously. There was a 120 as well. We strongly recommend it against the 120. Most smaller coolers like a 120, once you're at that size, you might as well go air. But for a 360 cooler, there is a benefit to going with a, a larger liquid cooler like this one. And part of that is going to be noise targeted or at least leveling the noise so that at a given noise level, a larger cooler will typically do better than a smaller cooler, uh, whereas once you start topping out the fan speeds, it's, it's really just a competition of whose fan is fastest. So today we're looking at noise normalized cooling at 40 dBA. We're also looking at the 100% fan speeds. For those of you who want to know how a 60 dBA cooler performs, you'll be able to see that and uh, some noise levels across the board as well. At $150, the CLC 360 is, is less initially competitive than some of the previous EVGA offerings like the CLC 280, which at the time launched at about, it ended up at about $110, $120 and has kind of fallen and risen depending on sales since its launch. And when it did launch, that price point, it was just 240s. Corsair pretty much only had an H100i class cooler, which is a 240 millimeter cooler versus EVGA's 280. So EVGA had a really strong foothold when it first launched with that 280 in that it was able to say, you know what? We don't really care about looks that much. Okay, we'll, we'll put an RGB LED in our nameplate because it seems wrong not to at this point. But beyond that, we're just gonna focus on the price and the performance. And so that's what they did. Now, at the end of the day, EVGA is able to do this because it's not really making this, but none of the cooler manufacturers, for the most part, are really making their own coolers. There are a few that stand out, but you take the NZXT series, all of them, uh, X, X series, you take the Corsair series, all of them, and pretty much everything else, and they're all made by some supplier. So Ace Attack makes this at the heart of it. Ace Attack makes the NZXT ones, Ace Attack makes a lot of the Corsair ones, Cool It makes a couple of them. Uh, you get some smaller companies like Apaltech, which is a, uh, a China-based brand that does a lot of the coolers for, it did the old Tundra series, for example. And then you have some others like Dynatron that did the old Antec Cooler 1250, stuff like that. And ultimately, although the manufacturer that puts its name on it, like EVGA, like NZXT, like Corsair, has a lot of input and guidance to the process, uh, it is manufactured by someone else. But that's not bad. That doesn't, it's, it's really not that abnormal in the industry to find something like that. So the point of saying all of this is that once you're looking at sort of an Ace Attack made cooler, the ultimate difference is going to be the radiator size, which isn't that much of a difference because the competitors to this could get a bigger radiator as well. And so you're left with things like LEDs and fan quality. How good is the fan that the company actually puts on here? And ultimately, of course, a lot of the fans are made by a different supplier as well, but that's okay. At the end of the day, uh, that's, just, that's how the industry works. So uh, to give an example of what type of thing a company like Corsair EVJ would specify by the supplier, 
Gen 6 Ace Attack pumps, which this is not, but Gen 6 Ace Attack pumps were very largely dictated in a couple of areas by Corsair, the initial launch partner for Gen 6. Some of those things were like the cold plate size, and you get stuff like the uh, fin pitch and density can sometimes be partially changed, although not that common anymore. And you have other factors, like whether or not the thermal paste is pre-applied, what type of thermal paste it is, small stuff like that, not that exciting, but that's kind of the level of control they have. Something bigger would be like NZXT's Kraken series. NZXT gets a lot of credit for being the first partner that Ace Attack allowed to make its own PCB. Designed its own PCB, did the Infinity RGB LED effect, all that stuff, that was all NZXT's doing, all of the lighting, and eventually it kind of worked its way into everything, which is the downside of working with partners, but it would have happened at some point anyway. So. All of that said, just a primer of liquid coolers. It's been a little while. For a lot of you, you've probably never seen a liquid cooler review from us. Uh, all that said, let's get into the numbers for this one and see if the CLC360 is any good at its slightly less competitive price point of $150, uh, where it is embattled with a lot of the incumbents in the market. We've been testing noise-normalized thermals on liquid coolers for a few years now. This metric allows us to equalize all coolers to the same noise level, 40 dBA in a room with a noise floor of 26 dB, and so we can establish the most efficient coolers of the bunch. The nature of cooling is that any of these devices could leap to the top of the charts simply by running faster, louder fans, but it's not exactly fair to proclaim a cooler as being best just because it has a delta fan that goes 4,000 RPM. Clearly, in this ridiculous example, such a cooler would have the best thermals, but would otherwise have untenable noise levels. For this reason, we run one test with the coolers all set to the same 40 dBA noise level, which is the chart you see on the screen now. The EVGA CLC360 runs about 40 dBA when its fans are all set to roughly 1020 RPM, with the pump still running at max speed. The CLC360 ends up at about 35 to 36 degrees Celsius over ambient, it's been a little while since we've run a CLC review, so as a reminder, these numbers are over ambient, meaning we're taking a delta of the average CPU core temperature and the ambient temperature as logged second to second for each of those. The CLC360 is within error margins of our 40 dBA normalized results to the Kraken X62 at 1200 RPM. And at this point, we're within measurement error of a couple of coolers, the X62, the Phoenix 360, and the H150i. The difference, as always, is now, how much additional headroom is there to boost the fan speeds and pull down the temperature? And we'll look at the 100% fan speed chart for that. With everything set to max fan speeds, the EVGA CLC360 and its three deafening 60.4 dBA, 2550 RPM fans manages the best result at 31.7 degrees Celsius over ambient. This really shouldn't surprise anybody at this point, as it's the loudest cooler on the bench, but only after other EVGA CLC products. The CLC 360's 32 degree result has it slightly better than the 33 degree result on the CLC 280, with two 2200 RPM 140 millimeter fans on that one. For most users, meaningful differences don't really emerge on this chart until we get all the way down to something like a 240 millimeter liquid cooler, like the Kraken X52 at 2100 RPM and 37 degrees, for instance, but that's why we do the noise normalized testing. At a given noise level, the CLC360 will always do significantly better than those 240 millimeter liquid coolers. If you're looking for a lower fan RPM to achieve the same thermals, increasing the radiator size will almost always help. There are times that it doesn't, but only when the pump is anemic, and that's not the case here. Noise levels will close us out. We already had a look at 40 dBA performance, but if you're wondering what the previous result costs in terms of noise, it's a lot. At 60.4 dBA, the CLC360 is the loudest on the chart, approached by the CLC240, also by EVGA, to no surprise really. And adding an extra fan does push the noise up a bit, but ultimately, EVGA is running really high RPM fans and higher than everyone else on this chart. So that's where the noise is coming from. Although the CLC series has been out a while now, the EVGA CLC360 is brand new. And EVGA's CLC series uses a Gen 5 Ace Attack pump. Gen 5 versus 6 isn't something you should really get too caught up on. A lot of people want just like the newest generation of everything, but it's not always better. Sometimes it's a side grade or sometimes it does basically nothing. In the case of Gen 5 versus Gen 6, there are some meaningful differences, but None of them for performance. So in terms of performance, technically, if you compare them head to head, all other things equal, a Gen 5 pump can typically be very marginally ahead of a Gen 6 pump in terms of cooling performance. Now, 
in terms of permeation, that's a bit of a different story, and it's a much harder one for us to do any validation on ever. But permeation of liquid in the loop is something that Ace Tech tried pretty hard to reduce with Gen 6, but it was already not too much of a problem with Gen 5. Uh, Gen 6 moves to a metal impeller. It is a higher quality impeller than Gen 5, so you get that upgrade over the plastic three-prong impeller in Gen 5. But uh, for the most part, the, the coolers are otherwise equal. It's just it's that impeller difference for the most part. And then there's a bit of an RPM difference too because you're changing the impeller. And so Gen 5 is within measurement error better than a Gen 6 uh, equal product on average. So that's the pump. And for the rest of it, other coolers in this price bracket include the NZXT X62, which is Gen 5 also for what that's worth. Uh, that's a liquid cooler. It's a 280 millimeter one. We use it in all of our test benches as a standard cooler. There's the uh, Deep Cool Castle 360EX, Corsair H115i Pro. It's a 280 mil cooler. And these are priced at it's 140 or so for the X62 these days. The Deep Cool Castle is about 160, and then the H115i Pro. Uh, 280 cooler is about 140. So EVJ doesn't have quite the stronghold it used to on pricing. Now, two of those are 280s, but they're very close uh, in price and they're fairly close in performance. So at that point, you're looking at compatibility difference, RGB LEDs, and how high do you want the ceiling on your fan speed for maximum performance, uh, if that's of concern to you. So the EVJ CLC 360, we really have no issue with. The 280 was very easy to just firmly recommend and say, you know what, buy this over the Corsair ones because at the price it was just unbeaten at the time and it came out and kind of slightly disrupted the market because EVGA said, we're new at this and we've got really nothing to lose, so let's scrap all the fancy stuff and just sell a cheap cooler that has the same heart as everything else. So that's kind of where, what it gets down to is ultimately if this has the same guts as another cooler that's priced more, you're looking at, again, RGB LEDs and fans. And so if the fans are reasonably similar in performance, especially when noise normalized, that leaves you with RGB LEDs. How much do you care about those? Do you want to spend more for them? So EVGA CLC360, we have no issue with recommending at all. It's, it's a pretty good cooler. Uh, it's perfectly competitive. It does well in noise normalized thermals. It's not alone, though. The X62 can get you pretty similar noise normalized thermals. Uh, 280 coolers might be more compatible in some cases than a 360, so it's just going to come down to what you want. We've given you the data to figure that out. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. It was fun to do something that wasn't Ryzen. <laughs> like, don't get us wrong. We liked working on Ryzen, but it was a bit much doing it for basically a month straight. So fun to do it something, something different. Subscribe. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to buy a shirt like this one. We're almost out of stock. Probably last a couple more days at this point. And go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, uh, and that'll be it for this one. So I'll see you all next time.